As you all know, Downton Abbey, the movie is now out and in theaters, and I thought we would look ahead to what it might be like and what to expect from it before actually seeing the film in cinemas. First things first, the napkin, never called the serviette. Take it and place it on your lap with the crease folded towards you. So as you should know, Downton Abbey is the movie based on the show and aired in America on PBS's Masterpiece. It used to be called Masterpiece Theater. It should still be called Masterpiece Theater. I really need to stop using a green cup for this, don't I? Yes, yes I do. Hi, I'm Captain Obvious. Some things to know about the film. It is set in 1927, one year leaving off from where the show stopped filming, although they stopped filming it uh, three years ago. In the story, only one year has passed, and the crew of Downton Abbey, the Granthams and company, are getting ready to host the King and Queen of Great Britain for dinner. And next comes the actual drinking tea. Always loose leaf tea, please, so you'll need to use a tea strainer. It's a full 15 years after the show's opening, debut in 1912 during the sinking of the Titanic. Fifteen years have passed, and in real life something like ten has passed, something like that? Something like that. Something like that. The show is a story of upstairs, downstairs, featuring the prim and proper behavior of the English upper class, northern English upper class to be specific, and the rowdy, rude behavior of the servants who li live low quarters, which it's not that simple. Hey, slave girl, bring me some more wine. A wide range of behavior on both behalf. It's really just high English society and low English servitude interacting with each other in various ways, and it sets up for some very good dramatic pieces, at least it did in the show. And I expect, we expect it to in the movie as well. And when it comes to stirring our tea, we go back and forth, back and forth in a 612 motion, rather than round and round, creating an awful racket, splashing, and any sugar that you have added in will just sit in the bottom rather than dissolve. Many sources are saying uh, that you don't have to see the show or having seen the show uh, to watch the movie. Although, honestly, how many people will watch the movie without having prior seen the show? It's got a, so many fans, and really, it's the fan service is why the film was probably even made. You know, it's already got that audience. It's going to pander to that audience, but it's not going to rely heavily on flashing back to things that have happened in previous seasons. It's a new story moving forward, set in the now. You can enjoy it having seen the show or not. I'll put it on the list. So before diving into what's written about the show, let's go ahead and pick apart the pieces of uh, what we can simply glean from the trailer watching it. After you've eaten the sandwiches with your fingers, not with a knife and fork, then you can move on to the scones. Pronounced scone. Not scone. So, we, so we have the same music as the show, but it seems to be expanded. It's more cinematic, bigger, more rounded. They probably have double the orchestra they had before, the members, and you know, much longer score based on the theme that we previously know and love. Just the song itself and the opening score when you see the trailer, when the, you see the car drive up, it's like you immediately know what it is. It's down and heavy. You immediately know what to expect. What's next? I don't know. As it is 1927, uh, as and is remarked in the trailer. No maid, no valet, no nanny even. It's 1927. We're modern folk. The movie will be reflecting on modern times and how the Crawley family and their large staff will reflect these changes. And things are changing quite a bit. We've already been in the 1920s for a good portion of the series, something like three series of the full series. There are, there are a few social shakeups and shocks to be expected. Everything was 1927, everything, the Roaring Twenties, is pretty much full in effect. We have other things to look forward to, most notably uh, possibly looking toward depression and the rise of fascism. I don't think we're going to get that far. So we see that the children are all grown up. That's exciting. I love that. The, oh, they're all grown up and they're playing and they're, they're not just babies in diapers anymore. They're getting bigger. For all I know, that. Uh, they're three years older in real life, so are they using the same actors and actresses from the show? Because they're, they'll be much bigger. I suppose it doesn't matter. When they're small children, small children are small children. Are they four? Are they eight? I'm, you can't tell them apart. Not even their parents. 
We see Molesley again. It looks like he's returned. Uh, if you watch the series, you know, and I hope this doesn't come as a spoiler, you ought to know by now that Molesley retired from service and started working as a school teacher. But as you can see, he is back in his livery and it seems he is serving again. Is it a temporary a gig or is he permanently done with teaching and decided he misses service, prefers service, misses the Crowleys, etc, etc. We see Barrow uh, with a male figure that doesn't really, they don't really reveal who the male figure is, but it looks like there will be a love interest. It's probably a new male character, not previously known member of staff because, well, that would be a little odd and nobody would have seen that coming. So probably another servant of possibly the king and queen, something else. And here we have a sound bite. Should we really go on with it? You mean leave Downton? Leaving Downton. I don't know what this is all about. Is it the Crowleys? Uh, is it just certain members of the staff? We all know Daisy is now a landowner and owns her own little house, uh, thanks to Mr. Mason, kind old Mr. Mason. And so that's, you know, it's, it's a tease. Uh, who's leaving Downton? Is everybody leaving Downton? Are they going to foreclose? Is the bank tanking Downton? Are they broke because they spent all their money on this lavish dinner for royalty? Hmm? Hmm? I don't know. We don't use a knife to cut into our scones. We break them with our hands in two. Just like so. And of course, the banter between Violet, as played by Maggie Smith, and Isabel Crowley. That is uh, one of the best parts of my favorite show. Two uh, old ladies from different backgrounds always bickering and bantering about what is good, what is right, what is proper, etc. That should offer some very tasteful comic relief, if you ask me. We've seen the trailer. We know the little bits and pieces of what they're trying to foretell. They're setting the scene, but they're not giving any hints toward the plot. They're just teasing. There's just really nothing is spoiled here. So what happens? Do they all have a nice dinner and go home? That would be a very boring movie. They'd have to do more than that. What will be next? What will they have? A death? A mystery? A murder mystery? Did somebody overcook the goose? Spoiled so it's exciting to find out what is going to be the main conflict for these characters. Obviously, they bring Carson back from retirement. Maybe they're overwhelmed with the, with the pr preparations for this visit, but it's got to be more than that. There's going to be something that so far is just an absolute mystery to those of us watching. At least I hope so. I hope there's some real conflict there. Like, the show had a lot of conflict. They had mistaken identity, frauds. Uh, there was the bit where Bates and Anna were took turns sitting in jail because of a murder they didn't commit, they're gonna have to uh, somehow cram an entire season's worth of conflict and drama into one movie. So it's gonna be more than just, oh, the King of Great Britain has popped a button off his shirt because he ate too much. It's gonna be more than that. I've done that, by the way, many times. It's not fun, very embarrassing. So that wraps up my preview of the Downton Abbey movie based on the Downton Abbey television series written by Julian Fellows, one of the best writers in the business today. I love Julian Fellows, but that's the topic for another video another time. In the meantime, we've got another video coming up where I will review the movie and tell you what I think and hope to get some comments as to what you think. Thanks again for stopping by for this preview. I've been Johnny. You're always welcome in my cloisters of the Abbey. My thanks to the Milestone Hotel, and now, due to my guide, you know how to have afternoon tea the correct way.